There's been a lot of interest in the veterinary diagnostics market as industry peers have seen in companies such as IDEX or Abaxis outpace the average industry growth for clinical IVD testing. There's also a lot of interest in the industry based on the fact that the veterinary diagnostics market is less regulated. It doesn't come under the purview in the United States of say the FDA but rather the USDA and because of that there's fewer barriers to entry but also with the imposition of the medical device tax in the United States you don't see that extra tax added to sales of veterinary diagnostic products. Probably the most surprising segment performance-wise out of the entire veterinary diagnostics market was testing done for pets. This is in vitro diagnostic or IVD testing done on pets and is done using an, an installed instrument, an analyzer, that runs panels in clinical chemistry or hematology. Now through the recession, visitation volumes or owners coming to veterinary clinics to get their pets checked just routinely or for some ailment. These were actually falling through that period. However, the usage of such panels, the usage of these diagnostic panels on pets was climbing throughout the period. A lot of veterinary clinics had demand to have these instruments available for their clients and were actually convincing a lot of pet owners to have these routine panels done as well when previously it was seen as too premium of a service to have done on pets. So even in the, the depth of the recession in 2009, you actually saw revenue growth in the area and revenue growth for the sales of these diagnostic panels and analyzers that was growing faster than total revenue for veterinary care services or the amount of money that a clinic would take, take in for seeing uh, companion animals or pets. One major feature of the market in recent years has been product innovation in both areas, both in pet diagnostics and also livestock diagnostics. In pet diagnostics, we've seen applications of uh, technical platforms from the clinical IVD area, such as analyzers and also chemistry panels that have now been applied to veterinary diagnostics. And this area has seen significant revenue opportunities as services not deemed available for pet care are now there and also at reasonable cost for consumers. And you've seen many pet owners in recent years willing to take up the added cost to a routine visit to have these routine panels done. This report's unique in its market scope includes reagents and the consumables for IVD products in veterinary care, including pet care and also the livestock or food industry, and excludes certain other elements to veterinary care, such as services, uh, certain analyzers that are technically not considered by certain IVD suppliers. It provides a clear picture of what type of sustainable growth that companies can expect in the veterinary diagnostics market in years to come. Even though the food, animal, or livestock diagnostics market is not projected to grow considerably in the next few years, or even evidence flat growth globally, its long-term prospects are still good based on the globalization of food trade or the traffic of live animals and animal products between areas such as South America or China where there's significantly more capacity to raise livestock and as demand grows and becomes more distributed between different markets you're going to see higher demand for these testing products past say 2014-2015. In pet diagnostics you're going to see 
resiliency in the coming years of consumer expenditures on the health care of their companion animals. When you look at the market, there's been greater resiliency for the pet diagnostics market over the food animal or livestock diagnostics market. The greatest regional testing market for livestock testing has been Europe and with the economic troubles that they've had there in recent years, that's not going to show evidence much growth in the next few years. On the other hand, companion animal or pet diagnostic spending headed by the United States is going to continue to grow even with slower or tepid economic growth in the United States because you've seen a large segment of spending from households that are making over $70,000 a year and which are going to continue this spending, these spending habits regardless of the ups and downs of the economy. There's a less dependence on, on households that are more sensitive to downturns in income.